All right, if you're a roofing contractor and you're looking for, you know, leads for your business, uh, I hope you'll listen to the rest of this video because it's made specifically for you, but really any service industry contractor should be paying attention to this video. All right, hi, my name is Bob Rutledge, and if you would, I would appreciate you, where am, where's my camera? All right, so hit that subscribe button right down there. And uh, if you like the video, like it. That helps it get out there a little further. And uh, But during this video, I want to do two things. I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, setting up a new account on Google AdWords. And uh, also, we're going to research your competition. And I think that's really where you should start. Now, I'm going to minimize my picture here. And let's do a search for... I'm in a small town down in uh, South Alabama, but it doesn't matter where he is. I've got customers all over the all over the, clients all over the country, roofing contractors, uh, painting contractors, heating and air, and so I've been doing service industry marketing now for uh, since the 19 late 1990s actually, and uh, certainly the uh, internet portion of it. Uh, just to give you my bona fides. I've probably spent one and a half million dollars on Google pay-per-click over the years. I'm a Google um, partner. Yeah, partner. So that means I've got a minimum spend every month. And uh, you can go visit my website. There'll be a link down there. It's got a link to my Google partner badge. You, and you should check it out. All right. But let's just type in, uh, let's pick a town, uh, Austin, Texas. And let's type in roofing contractor. And let's talk about search results and how these folks here are getting um, sales leads. You'll notice the results. And this would be the same on your, on your smartphone. You might see a few less results, but 60% uh, of all the searches now are on... Um, smartphones but this part's going to be very similar if not the same you're going to get google local services listings at the top roofers do have to advertise that way now so google local services is a mandatory if you do not have an account you need to set one up now it is not it is something that's very self-service um, you don't even have to have a website but you do have to go through a background check and be approved to be here. The beauty of these, I can click on these ads and there is no penalty to the advertiser. It's a paper call lead. And so it's probably $25, $28 per call, something like that. And you set up a budget and uh, you rotate through, but you'd better have good uh, uh, reviews or you're never going to get any calls from these. Um, you can click on you can click on the ad. You can click on this to see more people in your area. And this is what you should do. You should know who your competition is, and then you should take a look at who's the best one and mimic those people within reason, of course. Then you have traditional pay-per-click advertising. Um, these keywords can cost more than $25 per click. But the beauty, the reason Google still runs these, you would think that this would have wiped out uh, any hope of these, is that this is a, a rotation um, where everyone's equal, practically. So your ad may only be shown once or twice a day at best. Whereas here, you can pay in an auction and have your... Uh, your ad show all the time. But as you can see, <clears throat> the next section down starts with this map and then a listing of three contractors. And these parts are where this is fed off of your Google My Business listing. So you've got Google Local Services, Google My Business, Google, Google Ads. You know, it all can get confusing. And, but if you're a small contractor, you can try to work some of this out. I really suggest on all of these, except maybe this, 
you hire somebody to do it for you. Uh, because these people, it's awesome that they're showing up here, but this, this will change as well. It will change not only based on how many, I don't think, um, I mean, I do think that the reviews have something to do with it, but it also uh, has a lot to do with the activity uh, that on their Google My Business page. You can do posts, you can post uh, services that you do, description of your business, uh, photographs from uh, customers, photographs taken by you. And if you're in the roofing business, you should be taking before and after pictures and during, during the work pictures of all of your jobs anyway, uh, posting them on not only Google My Business, uh, there's an app for that and you need to download it, Google My Business app, and you need to be posting pictures on every job you go to. Uh, if I had, I have a contractor that's pretty big, so he's got uh, jobs going in multi parts of the city on a daily basis. And so he's got project managers that are on those jobs. He doesn't go to them maybe even more than once, if at all. He has project managers out there. And I would use Google My Business as a method of, of uh, being updated on a daily basis of the progress of the job. I mean, that's, how I would, that's one reason, a very practical reason I would use it, way that I would use it. Now, a lot has been said over the decades, and if you're more than likely you're under this assumption that it's important to do search engine optimization to get your business listed under Austin, Texas roofing contractor, or just under the words roofing contractor. And there are agencies that will promise you a lot of traffic and so on. But if you're listed for roofing contractor or roofing, you've got to outperform Angie's List, the Better Business Bureau, Yelp, Home Advisor, and whoever Kangaroo F.A. F. Austin is, Kangaroo, excuse me, Kangaroo F. Austin, hey, cute name. Uh, you're just now, as you see, getting into some local roofers, a couple of them there, and then you get back into some, probably some national advertisers. Blue Bonnet Roofing is a local contractor. And so, as you see, though, it's two thirds of the way down the page. The old saying with newspapers, if it's not above the fold, no one will notice it. Well, you're looking at the fold right now. People will scroll down to the maps, but that's as far as they'll go. Uh, in some cases, below maps, they'll have a, uh, an FAQ section, four, four or five questions with a drop down answer. So you've got to scroll down even further to get to real estate where your organic listings are listed. So that said, your spending money on content marketing, adding content to your website in general is kind of a waste of time. Now I would take an article once a week, once every two weeks for sure. It doesn't have to be a long one. Pictures, articles, post them in your blog, take the same information posted on Google My Business, take the same information, post it to your Facebook page, take the same information and post it on Instagram and well, anybody else that you might think important, but those are the top ones. The, the Google My Business, uh, face, I call Google My Business a the Facebook for business now. And then Facebook, if you don't have a Facebook business page, you need to get one. You need to have the business management console set up. Uh, you need to run some ads. Uh, but you don't need to run them willy-nilly, helter-skelter. You've got to think through it. It's kind of like running display ads on Google. And we do that here. And I'm telling you, it's with fear and trepidation that I put together a, uh, an advertising list for, for display ads. All right. So that being said, uh, you need to repurpose that content by putting it on a blog post. Let me see if I can show you an example. Uh, one of my roofers here. So I'm in the process of adding this type of content to his website. 
So as you can see here, I've got roofing posts. Let me close this down. Sorry. This fires off every time. All right, roofing posts. Um, so we've got all these pages, and then we have posts. It's a, a blog, if you will. And when you click on the roofing post, what I try to do is set up for, it's going to keep firing, sorry. It's going to show uh, the last six posts that were added. Well, if you go to their Google My Business page, you're going to see about the same information. And basically what I do is I'll take that graphic and this headline and uh, it doesn't have to be a long uh, post, um, but I put all that content in lots of places so that it shows up. So, you know, that's, that's what you need to do. And you need to have a good website. Um, I will say this, I do tracking phone numbers on everything that I do. I started, I looked over there because I thought maybe I want to pull it up, but I'm not going to. So if I were running your campaign, I would put a tracking number on your Google My Business page. Let me show you what I'm talking about here on your um, your information panel about your business. So if we look up this panel, so if I look up Ace Roofing Company and uh, let me do a search for it. And they're in the Austin area. There you go. Uh, this information panel about your business needs to be updated daily if you can do it, but certainly, and you can do it from your Google My Business. Remember the Google My Business app. You can post photographs to this every single day. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it. At least post photographs. But as you can see here, I can click on this add a photograph here from this page and anybody that works for you can add photographs. They don't even have to be able to log into it. They just need to look up Ace Roofing Company and um, then click on the add photograph and they can add photographs till the cows come home and the more the merrier. In fact, if your customers do this, if your customers, I'll give you what's catnip to these customers, I mean, to, to Google my business is to, for a client to add a review and put photographs with it. Let's see if anybody's done that on this, guys. I haven't done any search here yet, and and you can see they have it. So it's not something that happens all the time. But if I wanted to write a review for this guy, I can write, you know, value, professionalism, uh, yada, yada, and then I can go down here and post a photograph. And it can be from your phone. It can be from photographs on your on your desktop. I have a lot of photographs from uh, roofing from my roofing contractor. I'm gonna cancel that. <clears throat> and uh, do you want to discard? Yes. So if you can get your people who leave you reviews to leak photographs of their job, it adds. Um, see these two right here. Right off the bat, they don't have the they don't have the picture of the person doing the review, and that tells me that these are probably made up reviews. I mean, this person's only ever done one. Uh, this one's only ever done two. Um, I'll tell you another thing that gives gives some of it away. Women always capitalize their names. Men might not, but that, I mean that just screams all these scream fake reviews. Every one of them. Uh, we got a, uh, at least a person there uh, and one photo. Let's see what they've done. Two reviews, one photo, but it's not a photo on this business. It's her own, it's her own picture. So it's not even relevant to the, to the discussion. So the quality of their reviews are questionable at best. But, uh, but it's, it's working for them. Hey, get reviews. Uh, you're doing one or two jobs a week. Uh, you need to give your client some incentive to do some reviews. Uh, I've got other uh, videos posted up here, but don't offer. I will give you this little tidbit of information. Do not offer people money off on the job if they will leave you a review. Uh, go buy some gift cards and say, look, if you'll leave me a review, I'll give you a gift card. Uh, it's quote unquote not legal to do that with Google, but people do. 
I'd rather see you, if I, even if I'm Google, I'd rather see you getting reviews from legitimate clients, regardless of how you had to get it, um, than, than have these fake ones, uh, the probably fake ones. Let me say that. I do not know. But uh, so anyway, this is your competition. Let's go back and look at some more of the competition here. So let's scroll down and find out why Camden Roofing is uh, at least listed on here. I mean, it's a pretty strong market. You take a look at all these five-star review averages. I mean, 4.4 is the worst that they're doing here. Austin 360 Roofing is not doing well, but everybody above and below him is. Um, there's no doubt some of these people I'm going to be skipping over. But you got Will Roofing here. Let's check out and see what's going on with his business. He's got some nice local photographs on here. Let's take a look at the quality of his reviews. And see, I'm believing these reviews. He's got less reviews, but I'm believing them because it's got photographs of the reviewer. Uh, there's a couple that don't, but most of them do, it looks like. And... Um, they just look a lot more, and he's responding to the reviews. That's another thing. So you want to respond to the reviews as well, and that's what Google is looking for. Um, you'll notice here you've got two that have, one does not have directions. Okay, let's discuss that for a minute. When you set up your Google My Business account, it's going to ask you, do you service people, do your customers come to you? You're a roofer. Of course, they do not. I mean, I guess some of you might have a showroom of some kind, but in general, you they call you, you come out to the house and you give them an estimate. Or with, you know, Google my, you know, the Google pictures of the house now, you probably just give it to them over the phone. And, uh, but you don't put your address down. Now, I'm taking a look at this one and getting a bit suspicious already. Let's take a look at this address. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I find this every day. This is another thing. If you're in the roofing business, you need to know who your competition is because everything about search is based on proximity of the searcher uh, looking for your business at that time at that time. If they drive another mile down the road and start looking for roofing contractors, they're going to get a whole different list. So everything, so what these contractors are doing is they're setting up offices at the UPS store. That's not legal. Google will kick your rear end off of there. Usually this guy must have been up there from years past before they started implementing that because I last year tried to set up a heating and air contractor at several Google uh, UPS stores, and it immediately kicked them out. It immediately banned them. It wouldn't even take the registration. It knew that it was a UPS store. So I would put XYZ, in this case it was heating and air, and I would put the UPS store address. I didn't even put the box. I just put the UPS store address. Bam, it kicked it out immediately. And uh, so, uh, by kicking it out, I mean it. it um, what is it? What I forget what they call it, but they just uh, they void the uh, the application, and um, so then your listing's not up there at all. I'm going to go in here and get this guy banned, and I'll show you what we're going to do right now. So you need to go to addresses and find addresses like this, and God bless him. I'm narking him out. Um, you need to go in there and click on suggest an edit. Now, hold on. I'm going to go back to this page over here. I'm going to actually take a screenshot of this page and okay, I'm going to take a screenshot of this page and then I'm going to go in here and say, remove this, remove this location, uh, doesn't exist, and 
I wish they'd put on there. It's, it's a fake address and it really is. And then I'm going to go up here to the drive. And, um, by the way, if you can't tell, I actually use Chromebooks for everything. And so everything is out on the cloud. That's another thing that I do is I help my, uh, customers, my clients, or as things get a little slow here, recent, um, every, everything on my, if my hard drives crash, I'm still good to go. And so I'm showing that that's a UPS store. And then I'm going to sound, what are, what are the other choices? Private, move to a new location, spam, fake, offensive. I mean, it's not offensive, but it's, um, it's spammy or it's this address doesn't exist. I'm, I'm just going to go with doesn't exist and send. And if you're in the, if you're in the, and so now it'll have on here, Google reviewing your suggestion. The place does not exist. Um, it's a UPS store and you need to get. So, so if, if you're trying to compete against these guys, you're pushed down one more position just because he exists and with his fake address. Because remember what I said, people are going by the actual location of the business. Uh, and it's just not fair in that regard that that happens. So go through all of your competition uh, if you're in the roofing business and find out do they have real offices. Now, like I said, this guy here, he's not going to give you the directions. He got the card delivered to his house. He probably works out of his house. He certainly has a commercial location that he does not necessarily want people to come and visit. And so therefore you don't list the, the company. You don't list the street address. And then uh, if you're like the other, and here's another good thing about this guy. He is posting pictures 19 hours ago. Okay. There's no reason you guys shouldn't be doing this. Is it the same? Yeah. WDR roofing. So he's posted pictures 19 hours ago. Uh, he's posted, um, where he's, he's, oh, this is awesome to do a, uh, drone flyover of a house that you're, I, if you're a, uh, roofing contractor, you don't own a drone. You're crazy. Uh, this would be a must. I'd have pictures of every house I ever did before, during, and after. Do a video, upload it to Google, uh, to YouTube, uh, use it in advertising, uh, just use it with music and flying over it. Uh, stream a bunch of your job, put a bunch of your jobs together. Uh, it just adds credibility to what you're doing. But if you were to talk and narrate these jobs, it gives you credibility. And so, I think I've hit on enough things here. Oh, but you still need to do a pay-per-click campaign. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find out when you do a pay-per-click campaign is you're, I'm starting to have a little more confidence in Google's um, pre-programmed learning, uh, how to, you know, it, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence. So you can see right there, bid strategies. So we've chosen a bid strategy on this one. Uh, that Google's going to optimize everything. No action required at this time. Four days left for learning. Um, you know, I have done millions of dollars worth of paper, or a million and a half dollars worth of paper click. And I've done every bit of it with manual bidding. And I will probably switch at some point back to manual bidding on this one. Uh, we'll just see this. I've, I've tried using Google's learning system in the past. And it blew my customer's budget out of the water. And uh, it hurt my contractor, uh, which let me step back and say this. When you first go to sign up for, for a Google Ads account, they're going to try to pump you into what they call Ads Express. Don't do it. Uh, call up Google and... I think there's a setting on there that you can go to that would uh, take you away from Ads Express, but uh, it, it happens. So I set those up so seldom I don't have it committed memory and I apologize, but uh, never use the Ads Express option yet. That's all they're going to give you in the beginning. All right. I've probably filled your head with enough nonsense today. I'm going to call it quits here. Um, if Again, if you like the video, please get 
give the thumbs up. If you want to learn more tidbits from time to time, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it just helps me be able to attract more clients in the long term. Uh, I don't do a lot of advertising, but I do want to prove to people that I'm competent at what I do and can help roofing contractors like yourself. So hope this has been helpful and thank you for listening in.